Good afternoon. It's Craig Tapscott here with Poker Org. I'm interviewing Wesley Fye and Ben Lee. Both you guys are known from the Hustle Casino Live, very popular players, a lot of entertaining, fun players. And they've been going through quite an ordeal for the past few months, we found out just recently. And they wanted to share it with me as I've worked with both of them before. So I'm going to post some of this video and there will also be a story on Poker Org with a timeline so you can follow what happened throughout this event for these guys. And it's pretty crazy and scary. So Ben, I saw that this started at the beginning of June, actually. You had a first contact with this, let's call him the scammer for the moment. You don't know who he is. So right. what, and you, he, you contacted you, he told you he lost 250,000. He's also that Wesley had sent thugs to his house and stolen data and also and electronics. So can you set that up for us? And what did you think of this guy out of the blue? Cause you're a well-known person in the industry contacting you like this. And how did you feel about it in the beginning? So um, right at the beginning, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, he could be anyone. Um, I asked him who he was. I asked him if he had, you know, proof of all these things. I was a little bit skeptical. Um, he said, look, I can't tell you who I am. I want to remain anonymous because, um, you know, the people that I'm dealing with are very powerful and influential. Um, and I don't want to risk, you know, um, my professional career. Um, but the truth is, you know, I've been I've been a victim of a scam. Um, I've been the victim of a burglary, and and Wesley, you know, was the person behind it. And I said, okay, can you prove this? He said, absolutely. Um, I have bank statements, I have police reports, and I have voice recordings. Um, and specifically, he played me a voice recording. You know, it was like a few seconds long, and it was Wesley's voice. Um, and he took that uh, recording completely out of context, and he said, look, this is proof that Wesley was taunting and mocking me after the burglary. Okay. So, so if you go to the website um, and you look at, you know, uh, that particular voice recording, you'll hear Wesley's voice saying something like, well, I just won't reply to you. You, you can't do anything to me. Sort of like that. Can um, you tell them the website they should go to? Uh, it's scamclarification.com. Okay. So, yeah. So when he played this voice recording, you know, I, um, he asked me, you know, are we talking about the same person? Is this a case of mistaken identity? And I was like, nope, it's not, you know, it's, it's really, it's really who you say it is. Um, and you know, at the time, as I've uh, acknowledged, you know, Wesley and I, you know, we didn't like each other very much. I specifically had, um, a personal dislike for Wesley. And so, you know, I was not, in an objective uh, headspace, I heard what I heard and I immediately rushed to judgment. You know, I said to myself, Jesus Christ, you know, this guy, Wesley, not only is he a scammer, he's um, a violent criminal. He actually has thugs, you know, that he hires to, to break into people's homes. You know, this is like some organized crime gangland kind of stuff. And it's just too much. It's, it's just, um, you know, I was outraged. Um, I was, I felt a lot of sympathy for the victim because he said that he was uh, just, you know, an average working professional and, and that this amount of money um, was his entire life savings. And, and, and I felt, you know, wow, like seriously, like you've been scammed of your life savings and, you know, your home's been burgled. And he made it a point to say, um, my girlfriend lives there with me and, and, and she was pregnant at the time. And, you know, et cetera. So I was, I was honestly, I was, uh, I felt, uh, very sympathetic. And in addition to that, you know, I was also very enraged, um, at the fact that somebody I knew, um, you know, was behind all of this. And, and like I said, I, 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 you know, didn't like Wesley. I didn't trust Wesley, but I, I definitely didn't have him down as a violent criminal, um, nor, you know, having ties to any sort of organized crime. Um, so I was shocked, um, and I reacted, you know, I reacted, I, right. I, I, um, you know, spoke to, um, a bunch of people. I spoke to Ryan Feldman. He was the first person I spoke to. I said, look, Ryan, you have to, you have to know that, you know, this is, uh, you know, very serious. Uh, I, I spoke with, uh, Nick Gertucci. I told him the same thing. Um, and I was pressing, um, pretty hard because I, I was, I was, uh, you know, really wanting to, 
um, expose Wesley, um, you know, for what he had done. And I thought, you know, you can't just bully people like this. You just can't, you know, use violence against people like this. Um, and I, you know, I mean, it, it, it wasn't really my fight, you know, to begin with. It, it, it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with me. Um, but, you know, I got really emotional and I decided to get involved. Um, of course, um, I did not like Wesley to begin with. Um, can you can you talk about that for a second? Because obviously yeah. I, I'm a big fan of the show and know, have met both you guys. I can't keep track of everything going on in the poker world, but I didn't know you guys had any issues. How did that all start that you had some animosity? You know, I, I don't really know how it started. I can't pinpoint a precise point in time when it started. Uh, you know, I don't think Wesley can either. I mean, we've spoken about this earlier today on, on Nick Vertucci's podcast. Um, you know, we, we have overlapping social circles and, you know, maybe, you know, he heard me say certain things about him and, and I heard him say certain things about uh, me. And, you know. Personality, whatever. It's just poker. Yeah. Very emotion. Poker is very yeah. Uh, of course. I mean, and then, though, as I, I, I'm going through the timeline myself, because I've spent all day reading everything a number of times, and correct me if I'm ever wrong, that a couple months later, this guy reappeared in your life, said yes. he lost his life savings. He wanted to uh, find a way to get Wesley pinned to this crime and offered to get information for you for about $35,000. Is that correct? Something around no. there? No, no, that's not correct. Um, so, so he did not, um, he did not contact me offering to, to dig into Wesley for me. Okay. He, okay. he, he approached me in June saying that he had information on Wesley right. and he asked for my support, uh, my financial support in exposing this information. I did not engage. I didn't give him any money. Um, it was in August, two months after that. That he contacted me again, and once again, you know, he was, uh, 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 you know, pressing me for for funds. He said, uh, "Listen, you know, I know you want to bring Wesley down. I know you want to expose him. I know you don't like him. I know that, you know, you don't stand for this kind of bullshit. You know, um, he's a scammer. You know, he's a criminal. I know that you want to expose him just as much as I do. Um, but you know, I have." incurred me and my friend we have incurred 40 to 50,000 british pounds in expenses uh running our own private investigation um and he said i need you to i i i'm not expecting you to defray all of it um but i need your help to defray some of it um and specifically he made me a proposal um the first proposal that he made was 2500 up front Okay, as um, a sort of what he called a gesture of goodwill or gesture of good faith, um, twenty five hundred up front, followed by three payments of twenty five hundred each, every time a media journalist vetted this story and decided to publish it. Okay, and 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 I saw that as, um, you know, I, I saw two things in that. First of all, um, I expect that professional journalists and professional media outlets such as you know yourself um when you report a story you investigate you know you verify facts you ask to see proof um you establish the person's identity so i thought that if he would be willing to have uh journalists or reporters validate his story that would obviously prove that his story was true um right. second of all if his story was true, and I believed it would be proven to be true, then of course I would want more people to know about it because my goal was really to, you know, hold Wesley accountable for these crimes that he had allegedly um, perpetrated. Um, and for that reason, I said, all right, you know, fine. But I still didn't send him any money. I, I didn't act on it. Um, you know, I, I, I verbally agreed. I, I was you know, like hemming and hawing. I was not very um, comfortable sending him any amount up front because as you're very well aware, you know, on the internet, yeah, it's $2,500, but, you know, there's people that just scam you for $2,500 and then disappear. 
Um, so I wasn't comfortable with that piece. But, you know, right around that time, um, he then said to me that Wesley reached out to him and offered him $35,000 to do two things. One, uh, to shut up forever, to not mention anything about this, to bury the story completely. And second of all, to out me as the mastermind and the architect of this entire operation. And that was not what happened. Is that before the email, the whole blog post was created outing Wesley? One week before. Right. And around this time, about the same time when you did agree to send him the 2,500, you discovered his name, correct? Yeah. So I I hadn't agreed to send him 2,500, you know, at that point yet. Okay. He put pressure on me by suggesting that Wesley was offering him 35,000 to out me as the architect of a plot to destroy Wesley. Um, And that was absolutely not what it was. I didn't go to him. He came to me. I didn't hire him to demolish Wesley's reputation. That's not what happened. I didn't fabricate a story and pay a guy, hire a guy and say, you know, take this and run with it. I didn't do that. What happened was he came to me. He said, I swear to God, I've been scammed. Okay. I swear to God, I've been burgled. I need your help. You know, please help me bring this guy to justice. That's what happened. It was not a case of, you know, me engaging somebody's services to destroy the reputation of somebody I didn't like. No, I understood that. And notwithstanding that, like, even though I I acknowledge that I did not like Wesley um, and I wanted to see him exposed, um, I made it a point in many of my exchanges with Russell, I made it a point to say, look, if you can't prove that this is true, um, then I have no reason to to work with you because because I'm not, you know, attacking Wesley for something he did not do. And he just kept on saying, I have proof. I can prove it. I have evidence. The journalists are going to validate this. You know, here's this screenshot. Here's that screenshot. Here's this voice recording. Um, And when he then told me that Wesley had offered him a larger amount of money, um, you know, obviously I wasn't happy with that because I I, I thought that he was uh, putting me under a lot of pressure and he was blackmailing me because he was going to frame me for something I hadn't done. Um, You know, but you know, he explained himself and he said, listen, it's true that Wesley scammed me. It's true that, you know, I've been a victim of his, but, you know, in the state that I'm in right now, I've been financially ruined. Um, $35,000 is a lot of money and I can't really turn it down, especially since I don't know if you're serious. You know, I don't know if you're going to move ahead with this and I can't just sit here and uh, say no to Wesley's offer, you know, while I'm waiting for you to make up your mind. So he was like, what is it? Are you in or out? So at that point, I sent him 2,500. Okay. And he lied about the fact that Wesley had contacted him. You know, Wesley will verify it was he who contacted Wesley and he spun a completely different story. So he, he contacted Wesley. They had a few chat exchanges and he specifically you know, cropped and cut some of their messages, took them out of context, sent them to me and said, this is proof that Wesley's paying me 35K. I have a a question. So when when did he uh, talk with you about this? Like about I, I, uh, I reached him for like 35K or what? No, I reached him for outpitch. Uh, I can look it up. Uh, Is that that before? uh, Sorry. Do you remember? Is that before he contacted me? I think he contacted me um, September something. September. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I think. Yeah. Hold on. Let me check. Yeah, the... I'm looking at the message right now. I'm trying to look at the dates. Was that Matt? And that's right before because I looked at the Wesley WordPress article, which was dated yeah. August 31st. But you said it released like on September 3rd or 4th. Yes. Correct. OK, so the so Wesley, the, the message that he sent. Wesley, you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm here. 
Okay, so he told me that you contacted him on yeah. August 24th. Okay, so yeah, so he contacted me on August 24th, yes. Yeah. But he showed you same some uh, so screenshot, right? Day. He showed you some mm -hmm. screenshot. You showed me, you showed me. I know, but he showed you some screenshot, which he wants to prove, prove I contact him for yes. us, right? Yes, yes. I, I, think, I think I don't, maybe I don't even talk with him about that. Maybe I just, you know, fabricate some, you know, Photoshop, some, yeah. something. Maybe he's just talking with himself and Photoshop the number, yeah. Or, yep. or, or, or he just, you know, name a number, a random number as Wesley, and they just, he just talk with himself and make like he's talking with me. Something like yep. that. Well, at this point, at this point, um, he did have Wesley's real phone number and Wesley's real legal name. And so I believed that he knew Wesley for real. Right. Um, obviously, you know, I now know that he was working with somebody else. Well, share share how this uh, website about Wesley went up, and then you said it got two hundred thousand views on Reddit, something like that, during this period. Can you explain that website and actually your involvement? And I'm curious how this was manipulated. You saw it. I'm curious if he did this on purpose and asked you to help because your English is better than him. That you rewrote it and sent it back to him, and he eventually yep. used it against you. So share yep. that part a little bit. So he sent me a draft. Um, the draft contained two main allegations. Allegation number one, that Wesley had scammed him for $250,000. And um, allegation number two was that he hired thugs to break into his home. Um, and there was a burglary and, you know, all of that stuff, the break in. So the substance of the article was, you know, these two things. But the presentation and the writing and the, the structure and the grammar, it was awful. It was very, very badly written. Um, really, really badly written with spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes and, you know, sentences that didn't really flow and, right. you know, just not it. He, I told him, you know, if you're making a case, then you have to write in a way that builds your case. You're not doing that. You know, you're just randomly, um, you know, just vomiting words and, and that's not readable. It's not um, easily digestible. Um, by readers and so i said all right let me help you edit you know what you've written yeah. but is that, I, is that for the 2500 or after the 2500 your i sent him 1000 first i sent him 1000 first and then he sent me that and then i sent him 1500 oh so um, you sent him 1000 first then he sent you the draft then you send the rest right mm, yeah okay. did he suggest you help him with it uh let me see because i'm curious uh, I because obviously so. I, I, I i offered to help him with it um, because after that went up, which I don't like, but it's part about social media, they, everybody immediately assumed, talk about the reaction of the 200,000 people and people automatically assume the worst. I saw the media post attacking Wesley and yes. all this. And I'm sure you were like, wow, he deserves it uh, yes. at that point, because that's what your point was to try to pin all this on Wesley and bring him to justice in a way, not in a yes. way, but actually bring him to justice on some of the things you found out that you thought he had done. But what was the reaction of the community when you saw that? And how did you I deal mean, with that? I wasn't really paying much attention to it because, you know, I thought that I just helped with the article and I gave him some money and I thought, you know, that was it. I, I wasn't, you know, reading the Reddit thread five times a day. Um, but for the most part, I saw that maybe 70% of people believed that um, Wesley had scammed him. Right. But about this time, was he pushing you and saying, hey, uh, I'm being followed by thugs and yeah. I'm getting threatening phone calls by a Chinese man. And it led up to you even being more like, I got to help this guy and get Wesley arrested. I read that part. Yeah. Yeah. And to be very honest with you, um, I thought that I was also in, in, in you know, danger of physical harm. Um, and because he, he, he told me he was being followed. He sent me voice recordings of phone calls allegedly from Chinese thugs, you know, who said that they were going to come to his house, etc. So I said, damn it, you know, this is horrible. This is a bad situation. Um, and I was also just enraged because I thought, you know, how could Wesley do this? 
you know, it, it's bad enough that he's scamming somebody, but resorting to violence like this for a second time is, is just way, way out of line. Right. So I said to myself, all right, if Wesley can send thugs after him, he can also send thugs after me. Right. And for a period of four days, I hired armed security to be stationed in my house and also patrolling the perimeter of my house 24 um, seven. You know, my, my, I have certain household staff. They were terrified. You know, they were scared to come to work. Um, I had visitors, you know, during that period, they visited me in the evening. They, they were like, what the hell is going on, Ben? Like, right. why do you have security guys like this? Like, like, you know, is there a threat? Is there some kind of trouble? And I said, look, it's just complicated. Um, well, how, did, how, did this, how, did, cameras. Right, how did this lead now that you're going to push this along and make three different payments in one day, you mentioned, and, and a, a yeah. friend of yours in London took care of this by cash? Yes. So, so he told me he was being pursued by these thugs. He was being followed. Um, he said, these threats are very credible because the callers correctly identified, uh, you know, his address, uh, his place of work, what he was wearing, what he had for lunch, uh, the route that he took. So they told him all of these things. Um, so he said, look, I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving my home. I'm going to, you know, um, stay in an Airbnb. Uh, I'm asking my wife and daughter to go stay with her family for a bit. Um, and, you know, this is terrible, you know, and, 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 he told me, I mean, in my state of extreme stress and panic, because, you know, this was a very high stress situation. He told me um, the only way to stop Wesley is to purchase this piece of evidence that was offered to him by a Chinese businessman um, who claimed to be connected to Wesley. OK, so he meets with this Chinese businessman who he says um was previously associated with Wesley. And apparently this guy had uh, documentary evidence of Wesley having committed immigration fraud. Okay, so specifically he said, Wesley entered into a sham marriage in order to get a green card so that he could come to the United States. Um, and he said, look, the, the, the authorities don't mess around with this. You know, we, we procure this evidence. We report him to the authorities. He's going to get arrested. He's going to get deported. Um, so we need to get hold of this evidence. Initially, he said to me that this Chinese guy was requesting 80,000 British pounds. That's $100,000 right. um, for this evidence. And I said, no way. Hell no. Um, then he came back and he said it was 45,000 pounds because he had negotiated. Um, I still said, hell no. Um, but then he was like, listen, I'm being pursued by thugs. This is a very dangerous situation. Um, you know, Wesley's coming to get me, um, you know, and, and, and I said, all right, I'll pay half. That was how it started. Um, right. so I agreed to give him 22,500 British pounds, which I paid in two different payments because initially he said, I only need 7,500. So I sent 7,500 in crypto to my friend and I had my friend give him cash. You know, he initially asked me to just send him 7,500 in crypto to this third party wallet. He said it was his friend's wallet. I said, no way, because you're just going to say you never got it. Um, you're just going to say your friend ran away with it. No way. Like I'm sending it to somebody I know and they're giving you cash um, and they're going to vouch for the fact that they gave you cash. So he initially asked for 7,500 and then he came back for 15,000 more. So that was 225. And then he came back a third time and he said, look, I'm so sorry, Ben, but I'm short 7,500. You've paid your half. Now it's on me to pay my half, but I just don't have 7,500 in cash on me. I have it in my bank, you know, but the daily withdrawal limit at my bank is 2,500. Wow. So I'm going to go to my bank, uh, you know, for the next three days to get $2,500 a day. Uh, 2,500 pounds a day. Um, and I promise that if you loan me 7,500, I will pay you back in four days. So I was really annoyed by this. This was at six o'clock in the morning, um, my time, because I had to stay up all night. 
um, to deal with all of his stupid, you know, uh, uh, requests and updates and uh, cash transactions. Um, I had to stay up, you know, to communicate with my friend to make sure that, you know, he handed him the cash all right. Um, so I just said, all right, fine. You know, I'm, I'm basically committed at this point. I've sent him 22.5, you know, I'm just going to send him 7,500 more. Wasn't very happy with it, but I did right. it. Um, and the, and then the next day, you know, I, I discovered that there are no documents. So you found out there were no documents and you yeah. realized then you've been scammed. Uh, is this around the time that you talked to Ryan and he got both yeah. of you together? Yeah. So, so as soon as I realized that I had been scammed, I called Ryan Feldman um, and I told him what had happened. And I said, fuck, I think I've been scammed. And he said, oh my God, Wesley called me this morning saying the exact same thing. And then Ryan said, and then Ryan said, do you know anything about an email? I said, yes, I do. Because he sent me a draft of the article. I edited it and I sent him an edited version back in email. So what he had done was he had taken a video of him logging into his Gmail account and opening an email that was sent by me. Yeah, I saw that. That contained an attachment. And he says, this is proof that Ben authored the entire thing. This is proof that Ben um, originated and orchestrated and architected the whole thing. And he hired me to publish this. He wrote every word of this. Um, technically true. And he tried to sell that evidence to Wesley for how much? 55? 30. Uh, yeah, he like first he contacted me with like 35k to to provide me with the name like before the 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 blog before the under uncovering Wesley vlog a blog uh, 35k but now he's adding the price they said like 55k yeah Wesley Wesley I did see something I went through all both of your Twitter accounts I did see something where you were aware that you thought that someone was a scam you were being scammed. And you thought someone at the HCL, you weren't naming anybody, mm. was involved, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, I, I, at that time, I thought I thought Ben did it. I think Ben hired a guy to did everything. That's what I thought. Mm. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. Uh, well, but you never paid any money to this dude directly, correct? Yeah, of course not. <laughs> he's a he's a stupid scammer. Right, but uh, you continue to talk. When did it all break for you guys? Is it when you sat down and shared each other's phones and said, yeah. "Holy shit." You know, this is what happened to both of us, and what do we do now? Post talk with Ryan, and yeah, and we figure out we yeah we get we're getting scammed, right? And I mean, as soon as Wesley showed me his phone, and he showed me all of these messages and voice notes, I said, "Oh my fucking god!" You know, he's playing us both. He was telling me a story. He was telling me Wesley scammed him and sent thugs after him. And he was telling Wesley that I hired him to destroy Wesley's reputation, um, you know, and I had created the whole thing out of thin air. So simply by what he had told Wesley, uh, you know, if you compare, so simply going by what he told Wesley, right. that alone proves that what he told me is false, right? And right. so that means that Wesley didn't scam him. Well, well, in the meantime, you've hired private detectives. Uh, and have. also in the meantime, I see that you discovered that this person, you're 99% sure, maybe 100% sure, you have a picture of him being arrested for some cocaine bust from January 2022. How did that picture come about? And tell me about the private detectives. What did they discover? Somebody posted on Wesley's tweet. Yeah. Oh, oh the, a picture of the guy? That, yeah. Like uh, after we we tweet yesterday, someone posted a tweet about his uh, drug smuggler and has been arrested in Colombia. And Ben's friend has uh, has been meeting him because uh, Ben has to give him like the money by cash. So several yeah. times his friends confirm it's one hundred percent it's him. Yeah. And then you hired private detectives to track down more about his identity, Ben. Yes. Or what happened with that? Yes. Um, so yes, I, I, I did hire private detectives to, um, you know, run a deep background check. We have his identity. We know who he is. Uh, we know what his date of birth is. We know what his address is. 
We know his background, his history, uh, who he used to work for, uh, and you know the fact that he has an outstanding uh, court judgment that he hasn't paid. Um, we know that he is actually a poker player. Um, you know, and when he UK? first reached out to me, he claimed that he was not a poker player. He claimed he didn't know anything about poker. He said he didn't know who I was. Uh, he said, you know, I don't even know who Wesley is. All I know is that Wesley was a crypto guy that scammed me. And my friend had been following Wesley and has now seen that Wesley is all of a sudden, you know, re-emerging as a poker player, um, you know, with all of his like crypto wealth, um, you know, and, 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 and he, he claimed that he didn't know anything about poker. So that's not true. That's right. An absolute, you know, lie because, um, we know that he is a poker player. We know that he has played in 384 poker tournaments, um, you know, over a period of over two years on a website. Um, uh, 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 pokerprolabs.com is, is what, um, uh, uh, so we, 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 he has a, he has this thing on pokerprolabs.com, which okay. details, you know, his play, um, over the number the, the, over the course of a couple of years. And, um, you don't think... know exactly what site he played on, but, um, oh, okay. And he's yeah. Wesley, you're still there. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Sorry. Okay, and you you tracked him to the UK. He's in the UK or is it some other address? UK. UK. He's in the UK. And then the scary part is, and I understand, I'm glad, let's talk a little bit, well, a couple things, that you continue to be blackmail. I saw these yep. threats and things to you, Ben. Share that because that's kind of scary for your family and for your friends. Yeah, so too. he, um, he, so he didn't know that Wesley and I had been working together for the last uh, month or so, right? He, he is under the he was under the impression that um, we were still not speaking and that we still had animosity towards each other and so he was doing the same thing he was going to Wesley and he was saying Wesley pay me this amount of money and I'll out Ben and I'll give you the proof that you need in fact he said that um, he he told Wesley after you get my proof you can sue Ben for millions of dollars you can make millions of dollars. Um, with a small investment of fifty five thousand, um, you know, and 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 when he heard that, when Wesley, when Wesley, you know, um, 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 heard that offer, he just kept stringing him along. He just kept on saying, "Okay, tell me more. Let's negotiate." You know, can you lower your price? You know, just to try and you know give him more rope to hang himself. Um, and while he was talking to Wesley, he sent me many, many, many messages. Um, you know, every time he sent me a message, I would block his number. And then a few days later, he would message me with a different number. I think he's used at least five different numbers to contact me. Um, and all of them were basically saying, look, um, you wrote the article, you, you know, wanted to destroy Wesley, I'm going to out you. Um, so unless you settle this with me, and, 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 you know, we come to sign, you know, a settlement agreement and, and I sign an NDA, um, you know, for a certain amount of money. Um, if you don't do that, I'm just going to out you, you know, and, and obviously I wasn't worried that he would out me to Wesley because me and Wesley were working together. Right. Um, but he threatened to make a website. He said, I've made uncoveringwesley.com. I can also make uncoveringben.com, um, so on and so forth. And um, he says, you know, that he is just going to prove that I was the author of the article and that I, um, you know, did it because... So basically his claim is that he was going to prove that I knowingly fabricated completely false allegations against Wesley right. just out of malice and spite. Just based off of a desire to destroy Wesley's life. But you guys were working together to get him to the U.S. Yeah. I read something about that to yeah. try to entrap him in that way, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we, we were trying, but, you know, we were unsuccessful because this guy knows that uh, as soon as he, I mean, we, we tried to tell him, look, well, Wesley, Wesley tried to tell him, you know, come to the U.S., we'll meet face to face, show me the proof, and I'll give you the cash. Um, you know, he, he offered 50,000 cash or something like that. Um, but he just never, he would just never do it. 
you know, he would always just say, can we do this transaction online or can you come to London? At one point he told Wesley, I'll come to the US if you get me a private jet. I, I think I read that pretty funny. <laughs> Wesley, I, Wesley, I thought you owned a private jet. I'm disappointed. <laughs> oh, no. No, no not, not in your backyard, right? <laughs> no. um, so I don't know if I may be more than one. I know you've talked to John, one of my friends at another news place, but um, yeah. that he did reach out, I found out today, to some executives at Poker Org. And they vetted the situation and determined it was not worth following because it sounded like a scam. Did they ask you for money? I don't know if they did or not. They just said they vetted the scam probably, and that's probably, but they just kept talking to him for some reason and said, this is not worth our time. And yeah. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about this at the time. I can't follow everything in the poker world. So I had a few more questions. Uh, so where are you now as far as pursuing this person or the the case? How do you see it playing out from both of your points of view? So I am, um, I am speaking with uh, attorneys in the UK, solicitors in the UK, um, with regards to bringing a civil lawsuit um, for defamation. Um, and Wesley, I've, I've, I've offered to assist Wesley with bringing his own lawsuit against Russell Tamer um, because you know, the damage that he did to Wesley, you know, in terms of defamation um, was significantly higher than the damage that he did to me. Um, now, on the criminal side of things, um, we believe that he has. So I gave him money three times. Right. Um, and that means that he's committed at least three counts of fraud. Each count punishable by up to three years in prison. Um, he was very stupid. Instead of getting it all at once, he split it up into three different um, instances. And so he committed the crime three times. Separately, uh, he has also committed the crime of extortion. Um, he has literally tried to extort me on a minimum of five different occasions, I think six. And in the law of England and Wales, um, each count of extortion is punishable by up to seven years in prison. Um, so I have made a police report. Um, I hope that the police will take this seriously. I'm not super confident, um, you know, that this will be done because based on my experience, I know that the wheels of justice turn very slowly. And mm -hmm. I know that, you know, police forces all around the world are overwhelmed. Uh, there's, an avalanche of cases. They just don't have the resources to deal with all of them expeditiously. And so what we have done, um, and I will repeat this, and I would appreciate very much if you would print this, is I am calling for readers of this article of poker.org. Um, you know, I'm sure poker.org has many readers in the UK um, to please come forward and help if anyone knows anyone in the London Metropolitan Police or in the Serious Fraud Office, okay, these are two different law enforcement agencies. Um, if anyone has any friends or family or friends of friends that works for one of these agencies, especially in an investigation role, you know, your help would be immensely, tremendously appreciated. I'm going to stop short of saying that I'm going to offer a financial reward because I know that that's just going to open Pandora's box for more for sure. scammers. Um, you know, and so I will just say that, you know, if anyone steps forward and, 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 and is able to help me um, accelerate this investigation, that I will be very much in your debt, um, whatever you want to uh uh, 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 you know, whatever meaning you want to make of that, I will owe you a lot. I will personally be uh, indebted to you and I will owe you a lot of gratitude. Um, that is, you know, something that I am uh, appealing to the public to help with right. because I know that, you know, for the police at this point, it's just a cold case. It's just a cold tip and they receive hundreds of thousands of these, they can't possibly take all of them seriously. But if somebody knows someone and the world is very small, 
um, you know, your help would be very, very, very greatly appreciated. Well, very, for the most part, thank you, Ben. I'll make sure that's in there. Are you there, Wesley? Wesley? Let's see if we can find him back on there. I, uh, but for the most part, I think the community is a beautiful community. I've been involved 17, 18 years, and they always are a wonderful community to work with each other and track down people when there's scandals. You've seen two plus two go to work and pick apart every single hand somebody plays. You've seen that before yep. the last couple of years. So it's an amazing community. I, and I wanted to ask Wesley, but uh, like this has taken, an, I saw and read in your voice and the way you wrote and shared all of this, that it really affected you emotionally in a big yes, way these last few months. Cause I, you have fans as does Wesley on HCL. And I was curious where you guys had been. So well, of course. I mean, I, I did not feel um, comfortable making any appearances on HCL, you know, as all of this was brewing underneath the surface. And I didn't feel ready to um, publicize all of this stuff as it was happening, especially um, in the last 30 days or so. Wesley and I were working um, sort of covertly to, uh, you know, try and get him to incriminate himself a bit more. Just I, just, I just wanted to ask you, you have fans and friends who love watching both of you guys play the mm -hmm. way I have over the last few years. Uh, what is emotionally, can you fix the camera so I can see you? You can't see me? Now I can. Stay right there. So uh, okay. what you've been through emotionally, because this is an attack on you, uh, how you felt when you first saw all this. I mean, how did it feel? Because you've always had fun on the show and you know, sit there with a lot of money. And Yeah, I, I, I feel... I kind of upset because uh, I lost first. I lost like five million in the last maybe last three months in poker, like in, on on live and off off live, like some private game, like so. And also a heads up, uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of frustrated about poker, about everything, like. Yeah. But I but as an influencer, I I'm willing to accept the you know it's kind of like a result. To being an influencer, it's I've been a crypto influencer like uh, in the last like seven to eight years. So I, I know, I know it's gonna happen. <laughs> anyway, we've so all, we've all had those roller coaster up and downs. I not like you, yeah. and me. Uh, but so let me ask both of you, please respond. What lessons have you taken away from this experience over the last few months, Ben? First, I mean, what lessons have you learned? And maybe for you, Ben, how else could you think you would have handled it? Because I know you're a deep thinker, you're a venture capitalist. How else would you have thought you should have handled it? And what did you learn? I mean, I, 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 I you know, um, obviously, you know, you're also aware that um, around the same time that this was happening, I was also scammed by Robert Mercer. Yes, I was going to bring that up, too. Yeah. Um, so for both of these things to happen within the same you know, period of time, it's certainly uh, given me a lot of food for thought. I, I need to take stock of this. I need to look at myself. I, I need to reflect. I believe very strongly in the notion that um, if you fool me once, you know, it's shame on you. But if you fool me twice, it's shame on me. Um, and I need to take responsibility. I need to take accountability. Um, and I need to, you know, reflect on... Um, just why, um, you know, I keep getting myself into situations like this, um, you know, and, and, and I will work on it, you know, and, and first of all, I, I think that, you know, I'm not going to involve myself in other people's fights. Um, right. I do care a lot about what is right and what is wrong, but, uh, you know, I'm very humbled by this situation, I guess. And, um, you know, I, 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 I feel like, you know, I should put my own emotions and opinions aside and, and, you know, I'm not in any position to be, um, an arbiter of what is right or wrong. Um, you know, when, when a situation doesn't directly involve me, right. um, second of all, I also have learned that, um, I have been way too quick to rush to judgment, um, you know, I was extremely biased and not objective when I was presented with the so-called evidence against Wesley. 
Um, and, you know, I had a blind spot. I believed it to be true because I wanted it to be true because right. I had a grudge against Wesley. Um, and that, you know, obviously led me um, down a very, you know, uh, dark and erroneous path um, that, you know, I ended up being trapped in. So I really need to be, um, I think, more um, perspicacious. You know, I really need to be uh, more, uh, 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 you know, skeptical when presented with information at first instance. Um, and, you know, just not be in a hurry to make any judgments before I have verified all the facts. I think that's, you know, a very big takeaway for me. Um, okay. And finally, um, in terms of, um, you know, my next steps, um, you know, before I started um, playing on HCL, um, I've kept a very, very low profile deliberately uh, throughout the entirety of my career. Um, so, you know, unlike Wesley, Wesley's used to being in the public eye. You know, he, he has been an influencer for eight years. Um, and he has, you know, sort of been very comfortable with that attention. Um, I have not been, you know, and even, you know, before COVID, when I used to speak on panels or business conferences, I always had a no recording policy. Um, and that is precisely because I was uh, wary that uh, people could, you know, record me and then, and then edit the clip and then take something that I said completely out of context, right. um, you know, and attribute a false position to me. Um, so, you know, obviously being in, in, in the public eye, um, one has to accept that, uh, 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 things like this are going to happen every now and then. Um, and until I have worked out how I can, um, sort of uh, immunize myself against, you know, such things, I will simply not be appearing on HCL um, at all. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's regrettable. I, I enjoy poker. I enjoy the competition. Um, I have very much enjoyed uh, the, the, the challenge of um, battling on the felt on camera because it, it, it leads to, you know, it, 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 it's a whole different kind of uh, experience. You know, there's a whole different kind of pressure. Um, and I've enjoyed that, you know, but, right. but I have not enjoyed being scammed twice, uh, you know, this summer. Um, and I simply can't allow myself to be scammed a third time. That is something that I cannot afford to do, uh, you know, because I think that, um, I think that I have to be accountable. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I have to, I have to just be better and, 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 and just, uh, you know, look at what I'm doing and, and not allow myself to, uh, 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 uh have such low standards basically. You know, I can tell this means a lot to you. I know it's, it's, it touches your heart because I, you have a lot of fans. People care about you, enjoy watching you play every time you're not on there. Where's Ben? And you had fun rapport with Nick Airball. You played with the best in the world there with Tom Dwan and Doug Polk. And it was a blast. So I, hopefully you'll come back. Uh, can you answer the same question, Wesley? Um, uh, what lessons have you – I mean, you're a little more seasoned, having been in the crypto around a long time. We've see, all seen – I'm part of it. Yeah, so – yeah, I think – What do yeah, you for me, for me, for me, yeah, my – my image is a lot like Ben. He's a you know successful businessman, and I'm I'm in crypto, so I'm dealing with those kind of stuff many many times. So I'm I'm kind kind of uh comfortable with those kind of situations. So I'm I when the first time I saw, I didn't get in very mad. I just kind of upset, and I knew you know it's it's just nothing. Like even I real did scam two hundred fifty k. Nobody care, but. <laughs> Yeah, even I did, but the truth is I, I didn't, so I, I don't really care. But, you know, the, but to the people who don't understand crypto, who don't understand poker, they think it's a big number. They think I really did that. But, you know, who, to the people who really know crypto, they know, they know it's, it's nothing. 
like 250k is just nothing for the crypto in the past few years so they they won't believe but uh people who don't know is really gonna believe that i i mean i i just i don't want to change their mind people just believe what they want they want to be so for me i think yeah i'm gonna to play less poker and focus more on knife and business even the crypto uh is 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 bad right now but you know <laughs> I, I i i don't give up i just i think bull, bull, will, bull will come anyway so yeah um mm, also i i need to be more no profile like yeah as ben did before i think that's 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 better for our life i i mean i i i have to admit i i love to be you know in the show to get attention that's that feels good but right right now i'm thinking more like should i be more like no profile and you know be more humble and then maybe ben won't be dislike me and this thing <laughs> never happened i mean yeah so it's fine I, it teach us a lesson even even russell is the real scammer but you know just so many coincidence you know my my ex employee has uh, mm. involved in this that's why he gave so much information on myself that's why ben believe him because he has so many informations right. like ben yeah ben think it's real so yeah it's well, it too, seems like, too many seems like, it seems like you both learned a lot from each other in a way because you're yeah. hardened to the scams because these cryptos world been full of it but you just got to be very aware and ben's like you know want to get things right make sure people are called on their mistakes and take care of business and you kind of both learn things what is that one of the good thing what what are some of the good things that came out of this for both of you ben maybe talked about it a little bit but first for you uh, Wesley, what's a really good thing that came out of it for you? Is there anything good that you learned from this? Anything good? Anything? Any, what did you think good come out of it? This whole thing. Mm. What, what happened? I, I I think maybe give us more attention, <laughs> more more influence. I don't know. Maybe that's the only thing <laughs> I can think. Did you I guys think anything good? Did you guys become friends now? Are you talking? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, we're friends. We're friends now for sure. Because you understand each other every different. day. Yeah, we we talk every day. Like in in the last few weeks, we we want we want to lure him, we want to you know trap him, and we we are trying our best to to deal with this kind of stuff. It's just too bad. So what yeah. happens now for both of you? Both you've talked a bit about. It, so no one's going to play poker for a while. Everybody's going to miss that. <laughs> thank, thank you. I, I I may play some poker. I may play some poker, but uh -oh. you know. <laughs> At first, I lost too much. I mean, poker hospital, and then, yeah, I'm just tired of those kind of drama. It's just too, too much. Poker I, I have my mother just yeah sit in my house and drink some tea with my friend and <laughs> yeah. Did you say poker hospital? Yeah, yeah, poker hospital. I lost a lot. That's that's what we say. You know, I, I never heard uh, that before. But I guess you never heard that? That's a that's a term. <laughs> everyone, everyone's in hospital for a while. You're in rehab for a while, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I'm still playing. I, I play a lot of poker still. Um, I have, I have a, a very cool, um, private game group that, uh, right. you know, we're very good friends and, uh, it's a really cool group and, uh, I, I'm, I'm still playing a bunch and, uh, you know, still, um, enjoying it. Um, still battling. It's just that, uh, I just don't want to do it on, on, on stream for the time being. Um, right. I don't know. Yeah. When I'll be comfortable going back, but for now I just want to stay out of the public eye, and and I just don't want to expose myself to any more of this. 